Esports, esports, esports. That's what this episode is. We're actually going to discuss actual esports instead of just shit around it. Um, it's been a bit of a mad year. I think the industry's kind of toppled down, um, somewhat predictably, mm. depending on which side of the fence you sit. We've been um, doomsday folk for ages, if you ask certain people, saying the industry is absolutely shite. Um, you know, so we problem solving, this. that's what I call it. Yeah, I never off, offer actual solutions. I don't help. I'm, I'm just there going, you're all shit. <laughs> um, all you've got to do is look at the panda stuff that's going on at the moment. You know, it's uh, I've been gone not long at all and, and nothing's changed at all. It's wonderful to see. But all the no, bad actors are going. coming out the woodwork now that they know Adam Fitch there isn't around to hold him accountable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, fucking Dr. Allen or whatever his name is. He yeah. was afraid of the Fitch, and uh, now it's all surfaced. <laughs> but um, so we've together put together ten moments that we think are worth highlighting from the year. Um, some of mine have positive spins, some don't, but are good for the industry. <laughs> so they are all positive yeah. spins. <laughs> hey, everyone fucking watching this expected that from you, by the way. So that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm here to be a spiteful piece of shit. Just to be yeah. completely honest. Um, yeah, I'm. It's going to be the same old stuff from us, even though we're here to celebrate moments. Uh, some of the moments, n- not necessarily positive uh, on a micro level, but on a macro level. All of mine are great. There's all of mine are positive, Speaking but then a, myself. a couple, <laughs> then a couple have negative kind of tangents from there. If you if you get what I mean, it'll yeah. make more sense when I get into it. But and also important to note for those watching. Yes, I am going to be eating a pot noodle during this because I'm on a work break yeah. and mukbang. Someone, yeah, exactly. Scully, so you Scully can hear mukbang. me slurping these noodles. Um, and meanwhile, it's I, I, I said I was going to stop having coffee, and I just fucking completely folded. My first Tim Hortons ever. I, I don't even know we had that in the UK. Yeah, there's one in well, there's one in Barry. There's not, there aren't many. There's a couple in Manchester, I think. One in Barry. Is it is so. not the Canadian brand? Yeah, yeah. Shout out all my Canadian fam, of which I have a <laughs> Maybe one acquaintance that's Canadian. Oh, I actually spoke to a Canadian yesterday. There you go. What was no. her name? <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, his name is Luke Ryu. He's a delight. He's a, well, that means yeah. absolutely nothing to me. Smart dude. He's so, guy. What should we do? Should we do one each? Uh, we'll, we'll pick yeah. one and then talk about it, then move on to the other persons and go that way. I think that's best. Excited. Now, I Excited mean, we've got, even though I already we, know what you've got, but let's pretend I don't yeah. know what you've got. We'll go first, then, I'll, because it happened towards the beginning of the year. I'll say simple speech. Now, if I had time, I'd have researched when this was. I believe it was Katowice, um, but it was a big CS event. There was no audience. He is, of course, Ukrainian, but teams with Russians and stuff were at least back then. I'm pretty sure. Mm. And it was, it was as a things of Russians on now, were, at least, yeah. Yeah. When things were erupting between the two nations, or basically where Russia were being cunts and attacking yeah. Ukraine, to put it more bluntly and, and fairly, um, and he stepped up in a moment of maturity, which was probably needed for him because he um, built up a bit of a reputation of being a toxic fucker over the years, being quite immature, especially like in the earlier years where it was on Team Liquid and stuff. So mm. him stepping up as like a figurehead of not only CS, but eSports, if you want to look at it that way, because it did kind of bring everyone together. Mm-hmm. I thought was was really brave, number one. I mean, it, it can't be easy to speak out and well to even be competing during times like that where maybe you've got family or friends that are in actual danger. Mm. Like it shows some real dedication to this stupid video game shit. You know what I mean? And and it's, it's something a lot bigger than that. Um, and while mm-hmm. things are still going on, and I'm not saying his speech saved the world and stopped the invasion or anything those li- along those lines, it kind of got everyone on the same page, mm-hmm. at least on Twitter, <laughs> which seems like that's what eSport is. eSports is sometimes just a community on Twitter. Um, yeah, I, I yeah. thought it was a like a coming-of-age moment for him, in a sense. Uh, I, I think it was a really good moment for eSports, though it obviously came out of something awful, which is still going on now. That's something I mm-hmm. thought like had to be highlighted because he totally was very agree. early on doing it and, and set a really good example of, of speaking out against absolute atrociousness, effectively. Yeah, yeah I totally agree. Yeah, it was really good. <clears throat> I remember, yeah, when it came out, like watched it the same day on Twitter. Um, yeah, yeah, like you said, it was just sick, very powerful, and like he's on the right side of it, obviously. So, 
Yeah, yeah if the end he just went like, yeah, fuck Ukraine, I'd be like, oh, shit. But um, I don't know if I watched the last 10 seconds of the speech, actually, or the five seconds he might have <laughs> absolutely fucked it. No, he definitely did not. <laughs> but, no, yeah. no. Fair, fair play to the fella. I mean, I still think he's uh, absolute toxic at times um, based on your stuff, your stuff that you hear and see. But nonetheless, mm-hmm. like this was a good moment and, and shows that, like, like in sports, like they can be a vessel for sending a good positive message. Yep. So Agreed. that's my first number um, one highlights from 22. Yeah. So I guess number two, number one for me. Um, this is no particular order, by the way, isn't it? I've, I've mm-hmm. just kind of, um, I wouldn't even be able to rank these because they're all from different titles. They're all just completely different. So it's just, yeah, whatever. In no particular order. So the first one I've got is um, Navi versus Furia at the Rio Major. Which was just sick because the crowd was just it was the maddest crowd I've seen in esports. Like, it, I remember I was watching. I think I was watching that series um, with my mates in my old flat, and they walked past my room and they said it sounded like a football match, like a South American football match. Which is, that right there is, you know, that's like a decent compliment right there. But it yeah, was death it was, threats, it was, gay jokes, not, like the the really the best of Brazil. <laughs> yeah, but let's not talk about that right now. Oh, you can. Actually. Give me a minute. <laughs> so, would you say it really benefited from having a Brazilian like organization at least and, and team like that? Yeah, that well, that's, the that's that just in particular it was picked. Yeah, the, the reason this one in particular is because it was simple. Everyone was just, I don't know. Everyone just roots for simple and Navi anyway, just because the brand definitely helps. But I do think it's mostly simple. Um, so it's like the best player in the world, the best player ever, probably, pretty much, almost certainly against the yeah the brazilian team that were doing really well that everyone seems to like even in brazil i feel like they're a favorite furia um they've got their own storylines with art the igl um, who's been there a while he's been criticized for not playing the best and then but he's also just this like mastermind figure it's just yeah he's, he's an interesting interesting player um i will say though yeah so the crowd itself was crazy i will say though that it only reached 1.4 million peak viewers, mm. which, to be fair, for a quarterfinal is good, is really good. But um, so the final of that major only got 1.1 million peak. Yeah, yeah. The highest ever in CSGO was 2.7 million peak. That was last year at, that was the grand, the grand final of the PGA, PGL major in Stockholm last year. Mm. So that's like almost double. What the Navi Fiori match got this year, um, and I also think um, Antwerp PGL as well. That probably mm. went two point four or two point one or something like that. Uh, right. two as well. <laughs> so like they yeah, they yeah. had really good, they set a really good precedent there. And then for mm. whatever reason, ESL, the biggest tournament organizer, I don't know. I think upsets had a lot to do with it. I think they actually fuck with yeah. viewership a lot. Oh yeah, hundred. Well, I was going to say yeah. So I think the reason. <clears throat> The final was so underwhelming. Is because it is an underwhelming sounding final. It was what uh, outsiders, which is basically the former Virtus Pro roster, um, with I think a couple of changes, and against Heroic, which Heroic are a cool team. They're a very good team, obviously, but they're not. I don't know. They're not exactly. You know, if that's Navi and G two like it was at PGL last year, mm-hmm. um, then yeah, the viewership is much better. So that was relatively underwhelming. So, but yeah, so that the match against Navi and Fury was a highlight because it was just Brazil versus maybe the tournament favourites in Navi. They're definitely like a fan favourite. Um, and also, I just wanted to mention um, Richard Lewis wrote a really good piece, to be fair, about goals. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The CSGO, the Brazilian like co streamer personality guy basically just about how the entire event was kind of geared towards him and catered to him and they ended up just showing him on the cameras even though in the background you could see empty seats and all sorts of stuff and he basically ran the show and it was a bit weird um and i was unconvinced i read it just out of curiosity i was pretty unconvinced but when i was reading the piece it's like he's got a fucking point you know what i mean yeah, yeah, um, um, and it probably hurt the event that as well. Generally, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's he's yeah. obviously massive in his home nation, but outside of it, 
like who gives a fuck? Like we're there to see the players mm. in the in the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what exactly, I mean. Like, yeah. I, I didn't watch the event, so I can't speak on how much they cut away and how much they showed him and stuff. But I mean, mm. I read. I think I read that article. Um, all of it, if not, I read most of it, and um, I was on board with what he was saying, which is mm. typically the case because he's got his head screwed on. So when mm-hmm. when he gets his words written down, people could, people can't really take it out of context as easily as they can when he's speaking. And I find that's mm. when it's he's, he's at his most impactful. So like it was, it was a great article. But yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like the the match, I remember seeing everyone going crazy for it on on Twitter. And if that brought in the peak viewership, then it says a lot. Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> it's for a quarter final to have the peak viewership of a whole event was pretty mad. Yeah, it was. It was just sick. It was such a cool highlight because, like I said, I've never seen an esports crowd like that. So yeah, mm. that's my. That's my number one and number two in total. So, okay, and next? my second and our third overall is ooh, which one? Phase Clan becoming a public company. <laughs> now, it's not because I think this is a great moment for Phase. I I think it was um a watershed moment in the industry where basically the biggest quote unquote esports property took itself to market and then realized nobody gave a fuck. Um, <laughs> the 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 um the deal uh the the merger didn't pan out how they how they thought it would in terms of the amount of money they'd have ab- available um i think all in all it went through for like 750 even though they were calling it a billion dollar um billion dollar deal mm. and if you look at the stock today at the share price today it says everything you need to fucking know and this is the biggest company the biggest brand that we have the ones with the most main street high mainstream hype and success mm-hmm. and acknowledgement uh, cover of Sports Illustrated and probably Variety. They've got Snoop Dogg on the board and all these rappers, you know, and they're like, nobody's buying into them. Like, like the price is at an astronomically low level compared to where it was at the beginning. It seemed good for the first few days, but like you had to let it settle. And the reason I think their failure is good is a highlight for the industry is because much like where we're getting to now anyway, it highlights the truth of the industry and people can now operate accordingly with real numbers and actual facts instead of mm, news who projected yeah. numbers and what people say on Twitter and LinkedIn. Mm. Um, there's going to be a huge um, reset of expectations, I believe, going forward, if not, there needs to be. And that in the future, yeah, I believe, will create a more sustainable landscape for the industry um, mm. where we're not great. operating on hype and valuation numbers, um, which are 10x or 12x revenue. But we're, we're somewhat moving towards reality a bit more. I think, yeah, the gap between reality and hype is like closing now. Yeah, and yeah, like, there's a lot of money to be lost in that process. Um, in the short term, I think the industry will progress on, in, on a better footing ahead uh, because of that. Agreed. So, yeah, it's, it's inherently a negative thing that they're failing. It'd be better if they were succeeding, of course. Mm. But um, it's just we a symptom it, and way. a sign of the industry. So We called it, by the way. We did a phase episode and we said, I don't know, company like that, the nature of phase. A hype company. A, pub- a hype company, precisely, going public. Uh, was it ever? I mean... It's definitely not over, so I don't want to say, oh, it's failed. So Because, yeah, companies can rebound, and I guess, you know, the whole stock market's kind of fucked. But, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, we called it, man. Cyber Athletics. Fucking go and watch that video. But well, we're just pessimists. We just hate the industry. Yeah. I don't I think, think we, I mean, yeah. Mm. I am. Yeah. Oh, I'm a huge pessimist. Um, but most I mean, we're both, true, but, so I I think, well. but I think... Most of what we say, if not all, most of what we say, if it's pessimistic, it's pessimistic for a reason, you know. Mm-hmm. I feel like we don't. I, I said we have to be proven wrong on anything, anyway. There you go. Says the only thing I've it. ever been proven wrong about when I had like a quote-unquote hot take is at first I hated Guild, and then I wrote a column saying I was wrong. You're setting yourselves up really well, and then they've gone to shit again. <laughs> the only thing I was wrong was backtracking and changing my mind on Guild. That's it. Even then, I totally agreed with you. Even at the, I remember at the time really agreeing with what you said. So, hmm. you know, you can only go off what's in front of you. And that was when it was going well. They were doing well. Yeah. yeah. You know? So that's the only time I've been wrong and it was right at the time. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Fucking hell. 
Yeah. See, we just can't lose, can we? We just can't lose. <laughs> uh, right, my, my second one is um, Tundra winning TI slash announcing Van Dyke because I think that's just a fucking sick, sick land. So he's an ambas- amb- ambassador and investor in Tundra, which is a British org, which is only a few years old. It's only like three, four years old. Um, so brand new org, British. Um, they've got a really good, I mean, you'll know this as well as I do, like they've got a really talented team behind them by the looks of it. They've just announced that, you know, Carlton Curtis, who was at Guild and Activision Blizzard before that, um, he's like the non-executive chairman, I think. Um, and he's he's really good. Like when, when Guild, we were just talking about Guild, when they were going well, he was the exec chairman. Um, and honestly, you can track the share price literally when he leaves, about when he leaves, that's when it starts to decline. And there are other reasons, but yeah, that, I mean, that says says all you need to know. Like Carlton's really good and they've just landed him as essentially big boss. Um, they've got Danny Lopez, the creative director, who's, I mean, I think everyone agrees is really, really good at what he does. Very talented guy. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, they're just doing a lot right, man. Like I said, they've got Van Dyke as an ambassador. Like, what the fuck? And they announced it with like this really sick music video with P Money, who is one of my favourite UK artists. Full stop. I think he's sick. Um, the marketing seems really good. They've just won TI for fuck's sake. Um, and how much did they get? I don't actually know what the prize pool was this year. But it, it wasn't was like, anywhere near as much as before. Was it not? Nowhere near as much. Now I had a look. Uh, <laughs> right. I wrote about them. Uh, just, just before I left Hitmarker, effectively. Right, and, right. Um, I had a look at the time, but it was, it was. But still, there would be millions a lot of yeah. money, a lot of money. Yeah, and it's, it's huge. It's prestigious to win it within itself. Yeah, excluding the money. Ti is a very prestigious tournament, isn't it? Yeah. So they won that. The content looks really good. Viewership's not incredible, but it's also not bad for the size of the org, for the amount of subs they've got. Like its content's going well. And yeah, I just think Ti uh, Tundra is a really cool org and I think them winning was such a massive thing um, yeah and I hope they can become kind of a touch point in British esports just as like a, an org that does things the right way and mm. is successful I'm pretty sure they're owned by like the owner of it might be Bournemouth FC but as, yeah. a, as a football club uh, the, they're owned by well they're owned by oh, the owner of a football club yeah. right, right, right no way which they don't lead with at all for some reason. Like it's just that's very much in the background. Mm-hmm. But um, I could do a quick Google. Maybe that's how the that. connections. Maybe maybe through their connections, that's how they landed a meeting with Van Dyke. Let me double check for you. Let me, let's get this right. Big Virgil. <clears throat> yeah, because I was having a. I had a quick look who they're on as well, but um, not very thorough. Oh God, it's all a bit messy now. Um, not this geezer, but yeah, I think it's Bournemouth anyway. Uh, right. It's a smaller football club, probably. I'd guess League One Championship level kind of stuff. Mm. Is the owner behind it? It's in my right, article right, 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 right. on a website that I don't want to say anymore. Fuck those guys. Um, <laughs> but it exists somewhere. Go read it. Because right, Bournemouth are in the Premier League, but oh shit! Be... Nah, I don't even follow footy like that. Man. Yeah. They sound like a championship side, you know. They've only just gone up to the Premier League again, to be fair. But anyway, yeah, check that out. I'll, I'll, I'll comment in the video when we find out. Yeah, big up Tundra, man. They, they, they're a cool Liam and Carlton club. and Danny and Ev, who's the CEO. Mm. Uh, yeah, who I've never met, but yeah. No, I spoke to him. Seems a nice guy. He's Russian, mm. so Simple might not like him, but generally he's a... <laughs> <laughs> so that's distasteful. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that is in poor taste. Sorry. Right, and the next one from me is G two goes and winning the the VCT Game Changers LAN event. Um, and you not have to fill me in on this because I'll be honest, Valorant, I don't know much about anything. it. But um, so I broke the story that they were signing a CSGO team. G2 was signing a CSGO team, female CSGO team, and making it their, like, G2 goes in their female Valorant side. So I broke that, so I'm responsible for all of this. But effectively, um, they had their de facto world championship for game changer side, so for women and non-binary and trans folk. I don't know how you band them all together. Non-men. 
Um, is, so LGBTQIA. There you go. It's the VCTBTQIA plus um, <laughs> category somewhere. But no, um, so for Game Changers, I had the big, uh, the first LAN, like, I'm pretty sure. And it's the de facto World Championship. It wasn't called that, but it's essentially the case. And um, G2 had been winning uh, most of their matches. I think they went on like months long unbeaten um, streak or online, which matters somewhat. I, I really dock down online matches quite a bit, to be fair. But um, they could have advantages if they're all in the same place, playing against teams that are scattered across Europe or something along those lines. But regardless, they showed promise and they went through and delivered. And partly, I just want to highlight their dominant year. Not that I've watched any matches, to be completely clear, but you can see by the results, like their head, head and shoulders above most, if not all, teams. But then similarly, I want to highlight Carlos, who brought them in. It was his idea. Obviously, as the CEO at the time, Ocelot, he had to make the final decision on whether they were signed and whether they invest money into a female team. I think this was before Game Changers was even announced, so he would have had that information that they were doing something. But regardless, like he had, he had to sign off and do that, just like he's done with G2 Hell, which is their League of Legends team made up of um, non-men, uh, just before he left as well. So though he was caught, caught, though he posted a video of him partying with Andrew Tate, video up there, link in it, whichever side it goes to is a little link we can click right now because I'm good at YouTube, um, <laughs> where we discussed it. Um, though he was in the same room as someone who has very particular ways of how he likes to deal with women and looks at women, uh, mm. some would say sexist, uh, misogynist, like Carlos's actions have said so much more than he, he hadn't even had to like say anything about it, but like he could really be shouting about the fact he signed these teams and made sure the organization invested in them, got them in content, got them working with sponsors and such, and you know, uh, essentially got them to the point where they could win G2 another championship. Mm-hmm. I think it's much more important that actions like that are highlighted than the fact that he was in a video with Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate. It's not like he went up there and went, Yeah, women are bitches, and slapped one. He was literally just on the side looking like a groupie, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he looked a little, he looked a right yeah. bitch in the video. He was just there like <laughs> while as well as the top G um drinking champers or whatever it may be. So yeah, I wanna I wanna highlight the fact that they dominated the competition all year long. Shout out to G2 Gozen mm-hmm. for that. And similarly um Carlos for investing in the team and and not being the misogynist and, mm-hmm. and sexist person, even though well, from what I can tell, even yeah. though obviously he's been framed a certain way now. Mm. Yeah, in hindsight, I mean, the decision to maybe it was because he was maybe becoming a little bit of a liability for things like going for Valorant partnership and that sort of thing, and he was the reason they were missing out on so much, so many opportunities. Maybe that's the real reason why he was gone. But I mean, let's just presume for a second, for the sake of argument, that he was booted or forced out essentially because of the Andrew Tate video. In hindsight, that is pretty crazy. I mean, at the time it was also crazy, but like, look, if that's the reason he went, like, oh, like, you know, like you said, it's not like he was the one being sexist. Like he was just with someone that's perceived as being sexist. Like I said, I've made my feelings clear on Andrew Tate. I think he's a cunt. And I just think he's, a, he's also, I, th- I do think he's a weapon when it comes to like his, his view on women and shit. I think, I just think he's a, he's a muppet. Um, so I'm not. I don't live my life him, hidden. Me, I will just say. What? Uh, I do not live my life the way he preaches. You should live your life, by the way. Just yeah. uh, establish yeah. that for people watching in case they think I'm some. Me neither. Like, I, th- I think he is genuinely like not. To, I'm not tangenting too much. I'm just going to say this. I think he's genuinely. Oh, he's just like what lost young boys gravitate towards. That's what I think, and I think that's sad. Um, the new one anyway. steps up every couple of years. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Sometimes fucking, we're good, look sometimes at, we're look bad. at the fucking Liver King, mate. The exact same thing. Oh, uh, you know, all these... His apology video was a fucking joke, and he was saying, like, oh, all these insecure boys that just want to be blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh, I was doing it for them. It's just a lot of shit, man. Follow these ancestral tenants to, like... Oh, nine. Fucking Muppet. Yeah, it's just stupid. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Son, your asshole punch your wife like, I don't know what the other ones are but <laughs> yeah no, it's just yeah it's cringe as fuck um, yeah. What was it? yeah having said that 
if Andrew Tate was there and he said, oh, do you want to come and party with me for, the, for tonight? I would do that because he's fucking rich <laughs> and presumably he knows a lot of people that are fun to be with. Like, do you know what I mean? Obviously, I'm being facetious a little bit, but like, is him, is Carlos partying with him that bad? Mate, my granddad comes out with racist shit. I'll still sit and have a fucking cup of tea with him. Exactly, yeah. I'll exactly. try and get him to change his mind know, it's actually a good point. when he says something outrageous. But like, yeah. that's the thing. A lot of people uh, our age and especially younger are not willing to associate with anyone who views things differently, even though there's a potential for redemption or changing their mind or opening mm. their mind a little bit, uh, yeah. a little bit of betterment or alignment. Yeah, Instead, it, it's, oh, they are evil. They are Nazis. Like, and, if, and if you think, someone. yeah. And if you think, just like you said, his association with Andrew Tate is enough to indict him of being a sexist and a misogynist and all of these things are like problematic for G2 and for esports, then it's just it, it, based on that video, it's just a stretch. Like they're not best friends. You can see that in the video. Mm. So it's just, yeah, it's a weird one. And in hindsight, I think it is a bit, um, yeah, a bit extreme. But like I said, maybe Shout it was the other stuff. Signing the teams. Because that mm. says a lot more to me. Invest in your, the money you could be putting back into your, your pocket somewhat. Champagne said, you're investing it in, in you're investing it in teams that are not going to bring back a stupid amount in terms of competitive success and stuff because there's not many opportunities to win events in women mm. esports like in those leagues. Yeah, nowhere near an, as, as as lucrative or as watched as ESL's events where men mainly compete. You mm. know, so like I think those actions say a lot. But again, shout out yeah. to the to the team for. Smashing the competition all year long. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Right. Um, I thought this would be on. way quicker than what, how long it's been. We've actually got stuff to talk about. I thought it would just be me coming in saying, yeah, G2, fuck dickheads, done. We're yeah, we've, it quite well. What are we on? Yeah, we're on 27 minutes. We're doing all right. Yeah, yeah. We're doing all right. Um, Stick with us, motherfuckers. Right. My third is we can timestamp it maybe so that people can like. Yeah, if I get time. Through. Yeah. If not, um, they can watch for retention. Fuck them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Isn't it? Fucking ghost followers. Yeah, you know what? Fuck timestamps. They can just watch it. Um, Deft winning worlds, I feel like, is a is an obvious pick. It's like low-hanging fruit. I know you're not See, a massive league This, fan. to me, means absolutely nothing, so I'm all here. <laughs> um, yeah, just a cut. So, Deft is a Korean mid laner, just like Faker, who's, like, the best ever. Um. They went to school together, apparently. Um, started their career at the same time. Fake went on to win like three world championships. Death didn't and, and has had less success, though he still had some, I think, just nowhere near as much as Faker. Um, so Death plays for DRX, Faker plays for T1. They played in the final and Death won in a best of five and he went to the fifth map as well. So it was this pretty mad Good thing. storyline. Yeah, and, De- and and DRX only qualified for Worlds as like a last chance thing. I think it was like the, the last play in or something. Um, yeah, and then he, he reaches the final, um, plays Faker, and it's just this mad, this mad. And the games themselves, I think, were really really good. The final game, the fifth game, was crazy. I think Gumi Yusi for um, T1 stole Baron. This is going to mean nothing to you about, but like, no, I get, I, I know Baron Steel. Yeah, you know? so he stole Baron twice. Um, in just like the maddest fucking fashion to like keep T1 in the game um, but yeah so DRX ended it right down to the wire but Def yeah. finally managed to step out of the shadow somewhat is that exactly yeah something like that something like that there might be a book written about it one day no I don't know about that probably not um, yeah, it'll be by Fion and it'll be 300 pages too long <laughs> <laughs> damn he's out of the industry but he's not he's fucking shooting from the outside mate <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you're such a fucking dick I love it well it's um, just true he, like, he likes <laughs> grandiose bullshit doesn't he like, he wore white boxes but they were brown that day he just like fuck me we didn't need that detail fam. also you've got no way of verifying that fuck off <laughs> um, sorry <laughs> it's all good <laughs> and then but like Worlds is always just sick and every year it's the highlight for me, like, or one of the highlights at the very least. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it was the same this year. Like, some of the matches, again, were just crazy. We saw, like, some of the best series ever. 
especially by the final. There was a can't think. It was one of the semi-finals. I think people were just going mad about. I actually missed it. Um, I think I watched a T1 series against JDG or something, which was sick. Like, yeah, it was just mm-hmm. Worlds was just always really good, man. EU and NA both shat the bed, but Shocker. yeah. Well, EU usually do okay, don't they? But they didn't yeah. this year. Never win though. No, they don't. You're right. They always come close. Um, so yeah, uh, Deft winning Worlds was a was a cool. Lovely stuff. So is it time for number four for me? This is a very short and sweet one. It's LA Thieves winning COD Champs and it's purely for Nade Shot getting back into CDL, uh, choosing to invest money in a league that you probably knew was just going to be a complete like farce. Like, like realistically, you had a year or two experience of the league. I think it was um, the first year had gone. So you'd known that um, the league was shite and the viewership wasn't great and um, it's actually probably mm. worse than the CWL in, in many ways, but he still invested. Um, I think they bought out the bought a slot from Hector or something along those lines, and they've invested in team decent content. They had that, um, they had a series, a uh, docu series to go along with it, and mm. they made sure they've had competitive players throughout, and they've been supportive, and they won the league. And for Nade Shot to co- go full circle that way, to literally be a player to be the face of it blah 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 to get to where where they are now where in his in his compound which is no longer the cash app compound um Damn. you know there's a trophy there for cwl or oh, sorry cdl 2022 world champions like that's fucking banging mm. fair play you got what you yeah. wanted out of it now go get another um go that's how i see it i just like the storyline of nature Shot coming in and you know, the whole thieves thing of like take and take what's not given and steal it from blah 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 blah. Like there's a whole thing there. Did um, you buy it into an esports storyline? Wow. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Like, mainly because like, I followed Nade Shot from like early, early does. Mm. I was a cod cod kid. That was my gateway into the industry. Mm. So I guess I've got a little soft spot for things that can happen there with, with Scump and, and Nade Shot, especially Scump. Were you any good at cod, interested to see what he does, you know. Mm. Were you any good at COD? I was I was Pretty good. I uh, got. I, I was when I was fourteen. I got to the. I joined a team that was sponsored by Now TV, um, yeah. which was Sky. Right. So we were sponsored, and they were willing to pay for us to go to a land in Liverpool. I always forget it'd be like an ECL or an EGL. Um, mm-hmm. But if you're yeah. under sixteen, you need like parental approval. And my mum wasn't going to let me hop, hop on a train and go to Liverpool to compete with people way older than me, um, staying yeah. probably hotel rooms with them and stuff like that. So. My competitive career was strictly online and very short lived. Mm, damn. But I just I'd smoke ninety nine percent of people. Yeah, it sounded promising. If you if you didn't get injured, you'd have been pro and all that. Uh, all that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, universe conspired against me because I knew I'd be too, <coughs> too powerful. So true. That's all it was. True. Yeah, it's just shout out to Nade Shot and and the team for for making the dream come come alive and come true there. Mm. Cool. Well, my next one is also probably going to be quite short, but it's um, Cadian, who I think is the IGL of Heroic. I'm not sure. Anyway, mm-hmm. he's like yeah. the main player yeah. on Heroic. Um, Heroic recently won the fall finals, which qualifies them for the World Blast finals, which I think is this weekend, um, right. which pff, might mean nothing to the viewer because it might not be out by then. But um, yeah, so they won that. And Cadian was giving an interview. We can maybe, I can maybe leave a comment link into the the clip. But um, he was giving an interview, and then his mum came and hugged him, and he started crying. Dead cute moment. Um, yeah, that was sick. And like, I think Cadian's been flamed a little bit because wasn't his his coach was that Hunden who was accused of match fixing quite heavily. Cheating cunt. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, he, and then he put it on, I don't know, by the way, I, I really don't know much about this, but he then put it on the players, basically saying they knew and they were okay with it or whatever, trying to like get some yeah, of yeah. the dirt off of him and onto the players. Um, so then there were some people, I think Heroic got booed at one event, I think for that reason. Um, and yeah, I think some people, he's like a love or hate kind of player, Cadian, but yeah. It was one, his heart on his sleeve, you can say that much. Mm. He does. I always love watching him. Actually, see, I remember the one v four clutch last year as well. It was just like mad. One of that was. If we were doing this in twenty twenty one, that would be the fucking number one. And my last, my final highlight 
of the year, the biggest one. I've saved it to last for very good reason. Um, I'm sure everyone will agree this is a very positive thing for esports as a whole. Is me leaving the industry? Um, Woo, yeah, Woo. it's great for two reasons. Buzzing. One, it's great for my mental health. Two, it's great for all the shitheads in esports. Well, actually, I've not really, I didn't really call them out in the last year or so. But no, I couldn't think of a fifth point. I don't watch matches and stuff. So I thought I'd put in there the fact that I managed to escape and find a job that pays well because you don't really get that in esports very much unless you're right at the top, pure grifting. Um, yeah, I think that's a very positive thing. Um, I'm already feeling happier. I took a three week break in between jobs and. I felt so much lighter and free and not terminally online. Um, in fact, I felt terminally offline. I, my phone screen time went down to like an hour a day and that was just sending messages back and forth to people. So life has been a lot better since I got out. I should have done it a couple of years ago, uh, just for me. I, I think as a, a bigger point about um, turning your passion into your profession and all that shite. But that's for, that's for um, I don't know, Philosophy athletics when we start that spin off as well at some point. So, uh, so or what cyber, do you recommend? Cyber philosophy or something. Cyber athletics. There we go. <laughs> would, would I recommend? Would you recommend, um, say, someone that's really passionate, loves esports, is at the start of their career? I feel like this is the exact position both of us were in. So, like, would you recommend someone if they're super passionate about esports and they want to, I want to get a job in it because I love it? Would you recommend they do that? Like I said, just on like a broader kind of turning your passion into work um, point. Because I don't quite know where I stand on it. I think there's an in-between. I think it's good to leave some things that you're super passionate about as a hobby, as hobbies. I absolutely 100. That's one of the things I'm, because I've often thought, do I want to get a job in football? Because I'm just obsessed with football. Mm. If you do that, yeah, it becomes your job. And could I then watch football in the same way? I don't know. So I'm kind of thinking, I, I, I don't think I'm going to do that. I don't think I'm ever going to touch football journalism. I mean, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what Yeah. What do you reckon? My, my thinking is you have to be prepared for it to not be pure any longer. Um, that's my thing. Like, you, you, you will see it as work, like, because it is work, like, effectively, right? So I, I think you have to be willing for your relationship with that passion to change. And similarly, I think you'll have an easier time of it if you're someone with a lot of hobbies and passions. And if it's your singular focus and the only thing that brings you joy, and you know, if, if you're at that level, I think you're gonna have to find some new hobbies and new habits and new in, new uh, I guess sources of enjoyment and intrigue, um, or yeah, else guess... there's gonna be a big hole to fill. Um, and uh, just just from my experience, I obviously can't mm. speak for everyone, but I, I think it's healthier to have. A bunch of things that you're interested in. If you're going to turn one of one of them I, into a monetizable, act. yeah, I think it also really you have to get specific. Like it depends what you want to do in the industry. So if you just say you want to work in the industry, you don't really know what. That's one thing. Whereas if it's a bit easier, I think. Like when when people say turn your, I think it's when people say turn your 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 passion into your job, and that's like as a good thing. I think it is, but I think you have to probably, I feel like that's more applicable to the role that you do in itself. So let's say you're super passionate about, you love journalism, like you're a passionate journalist, you want to be really good at it. Doing that in an industry you like is, I think, probably appropriate. And same, if you're super passionate about design, you know, like creative design, and you want to apply that to an industry you know and love, like esports, like more power to you. Whereas if it's just, I want to work in this industry. Say I'm just going to get like a normal businessy type job because that's just what I, where I'm going to start. Yeah, that's a little bit less. Um, you're not really going to get a passion payoff necessarily, or you might not. So I don't yep. know. I think I, I think it is something about the the act versus the uh, I, I guess the enjoyment of it. Like if it's an mm. act, as you say, like if you really enjoy writing or something, you'll still find passion mm. in it hopefully but i think if it's just yeah if it's industry based then may maybe at least consider keeping that separate um yeah because like 99 percent of people you speak to in in esports say they barely game anywhere near as much as they used to like it's just a, mm. it's a side effect of being around it all the time um i don't really know yeah. many people who have increased gaming or kept it the same uh, since working in esports full-time you know so uh, yeah 
Yeah, I feel like I would probably. Yeah, I feel like I would probably tune into Twitch a little bit more. Like I've stopped doing that recently. Mm-hmm. I feel like if it wasn't my job, I probably would still do that. You know. Yeah, yeah, because um, you just want a break from it. Yeah, I, the real answer is set yeah. hard boundaries between stuff. Um, is the real answer. That's yeah. something I've I've learned more about, for anyone like, as well. Real it? hard boundaries between like work and and play, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the more you blur the lines, the, the, just the, the more your heads are shed with stuff effectively and, and probably the less enjoyment you'll likely get out of it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, anyway, that's me. Me leaving the industry, that's my that's my major highlight of Sayonara. 2022. Peace out, motherfuckers. Sayonara, um, Adam Finch, the legend. The last one for Bilbo. Is... Well, for me, we should have done it the other way around. I actually, I actually saw this coming and I should have said something like we should leave yours until last, oh, but I didn't, so fuck it. Um, yeah, mine is just um, Valorant franchising teams announced because I think click there for our video on it. Oh, there, Wherever. yeah, which one of them? Um, yeah, because I, I think it is a big moment for esports, full stop, to be honest. I think how that does will kind of set the tone because people trust Riot Games, including me, to like run an esport well. Um, the other franchise in these, I'm thinking Call of Duty League and Overwatch League, let's just leave League of Legends to one side for a minute. You go CDL and Overwatch League. Um, yeah, both cost a lot to enter, both probably way overpriced, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Especially like Overwatch, which is brand new with no personalities in it, really. Like, no major ones. You didn't have fucking scump and that. Um, so like probably overpriced from the beginning, whereas this new the Valorant thing, you just to me just seems more promising. The way they're doing it, they're taking a lot of care. Valorant's a very promising game. There's no um, big fee required to enter franchising. It's just based on who, which orgs are solid financially mostly, and, and which are going to promote our game. I just think it's a it's a big moment, and I think. Um, yeah, like I said, how that does will kind of set the tone for esports. And and like I said, right games, I do just trust that they'll they'll do well. To be honest, so yeah, that's the big final. Up China, one. then I guess. Hmm. Big up China. If... Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I feel like everywhere you look, there's like there's that though, isn't there? It's oh, like I everywhere guess. you look, it's just um, yeah, only certain. People have a lot of money. Only so, only when you get to a certain amount of money, only certain parties have that amount. So it's just yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's bleep revenue a lot, man. But yeah, shout out Qatar. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, that's our top ten moments of cyber athletics of esports, mm-hmm. and uh, I have no wisdom to share at the end. I was thinking maybe I'd have a nugget, but I don't. No, I think um, yeah. Esports is in a bit bit of a weird spot. Where it's probably we're probably just in the middle of the, you know, the much lauded correction that everyone's been banging fucking on. Build back better, build back <laughs> better, all that lot. Yeah, yeah. But yeah I think that's exactly. that's what that's where we're at. Oh, well, we're like we're getting yeah. towards like you. Which got, is a good thing. You've got to uh, absolutely obliterate it to to rebuild it. So, mm. you know. agreed. Yeah, and there'll still be some that do well, but there'll be some in twenty twenty three that don't. And yeah. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. But besides that, probably see you in a couple of weeks. New Year, twenty twenty five. Fuck it, yeah. Doesn't never again. Never again. No, I'm joking. No, I'm joking. joking. (laughs) Right, motherfuckers, we're out. Make sure to like, subscribe, click that notification bell for to stay up to date with future videos. Make sure to drop a comment for the algorithm. Make sure to tell your mum you love her and give her a hug. Um, make, make sure, sure to watch it. England smash France. Make sure if, if you work... Oh, yeah, nice. Make sure you... If you work in esports, make sure you soon leave your job for a full-time PR role outside of esports because that's the meta these days. I'm, I'm in marketing and PR, actually. But... Sorry, yeah. Because it's it's, they're called literally fucking bamboo PR, so I don't know what you want oh, from me. Stop doxing me. I'm sorry. It's not on my Twitter. You can cut that out, audio, and (laughs) blow it (laughs) off. Right, thanks for watching, everyone. Let us know your highlights in the comments. I'm very late saying that, so it doesn't fucking matter, but do it if you want.